your bible with me to the book of second kings uh, chapter 4 verses starting from 1 until verse number 7 second kings chapter 4 verses 1 to 7 the wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to elisha your servant my husband is dead and you know that he revered the lord but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a little oil. Elisha said, Go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask just for a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons pour oil into all the jars and as each is filled put it to one side she left him and afterward shut the door behind her and her sons they brought the jars to her and she kept pouring when all the jars were full she said to her son bring me another one but he replied there's not a jar left then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. I don't know how I would like to title my, this message. Maybe I would like to say, The little you have is becoming much. The little you have is becoming much. Open your mouth and say after me, the little I have is becoming much. So I receive it in Jesus' name. Glory to God. The Bible talks about the condition of a widow who became a widow which was unplanned. The husband died. He was a prophet. But not only that, the Bible says, you left behind a lot of debts. Whenever I read about a character in the Bible, one thing I do is I like to get into the character of the person. Having said all this, and I believe this is an attack upon this lady. The enemy somehow managed to take away the husband. We do not know the cause of death. But the Bible says, since he left behind a lot of debt, the creditors are coming now to take the two boys as slaves. Now she's in a kind of situation where she lost a husband, but now the greater concern would be, I'm going to lose even my two boys. You follow what I'm talking about? Husband is dead, but now she feels, I'm going to even lose two boys. It's the struggle of a widow and the mother of two sons in a helpless situation where she doesn't have any resources to pay back the debt. There is a way out of every deadlock situation in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. No matter how you find yourself, I do not know. Maybe you find yourself being locked up in a situation where nobody and nothing can ever work for you. But I want to tell you, when the Bible says Jesus is the only way, it means he is the way out of your situation. Is the way out of your problem. Say amen. amen. Is the way out of your sickness. What nobody could ever deal with you in your life. I want to tell you. Jesus has the answer. Out of Zion's soul, salvation comes. Somebody lift your hands and shout an amen. amen. Hallelujah. So now this lady goes to a man of God. The issue is about money. Issues about money, finance. 
I need money to pay back. But she is running to the man of God. I want to tell you. Where do you go when you have a problem at hand? A lot of times, a lot of people make a mistake. Going to the wrong people, taking the wrong counsel, doing the wrong things. But thank God, this woman, she decided to go and meet with the man of God. Definitely, Elisha is not going to fund her debt. Right? He doesn't have any money. But I would like to tell you, where do we meet with the man of God? What do you expect from the man of God? You need to always understand the men of God whom God has appointed over your life. They are his representative. They are his ambassadors. Amen. Whether you like it or not, God always uses his servants. Sometimes the solution to your problem, your misery, your pain, so on and so forth, it is with the men of God. You need to find your connection with the servants of God. I want to thank God. This lady ran to the man of God. And Elisha looked at her and said, How can I help you? Say, how can I help you? Help is there. Help is there. We know God will do it. But how is going to do it? It is only God who decides that. Amen. Don't give up. God works in ways that your little human eyes cannot see. In fact, the Bible says, Eyes are not seen, ears are not heard, no mind has ever conceived what the Lord has. No, no. Prepared. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Are you excited? Sometimes some of the words get in my bones and explode. Is talking about what God has prepared for you. What does it mean? God is ahead of you. He's ahead of time. Before you could think about anything, I want to tell you, God did think about it. Before you could even ask, God thought about it. And he became active. And he started preparing a miracle, a blessing, a breakthrough for you. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prepared. That means God is taking time to do something for my life. Hallelujah. What a blessed and lovely God we serve. Amen. Even before I could ask anything, God knew what I need. Don't try to confine God with your five senses. It's just, just beyond all that. Amen. When the human solution is not available, I want to tell you, God has a supernatural solution. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes you look all around, you run from pillar to post, you do everything that you could do, but still you don't find any answer, any solution. You have to remind yourself saying that it's time for supernatural solution. I want to decree and declare over you this morning. Some of you need a supernatural solution. Nothing in the natural is going to work for you. Nothing in the natural, in the physical, it's going to work for you. You just need a supernatural touch from God. Hallelujah. Come on, go ahead, put your hands. Give glory to God. Supernatural. Supernatural touch. Say amen. amen. Supernatural touch. Everything is failing everywhere. You are tried enough, fought enough. It's not a question of working a little more harder. It's not a question of being a little more smart. It's not a question of meeting the right people. It's not a question of being in the right place. I want to tell you, you need God's intervention in your life. Supernaturally. My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heavens and the earth. It's God 
preparing something for you? You got to believe it. My Bible say Ephesians 2.10 We are God's workmanship created in the person of Jesus Christ to do good works which God prepared. Somebody shout prepared. Shout a little more louder. Prepared. In advance for us to do. Before I could do anything is doing something. When he prepares that's what I'm going to inherit. When he prepares that's what I'm going to do. I want, I want to tell you, be it in your life, in your marriage, in your business, in your finance, in any aspect of your life, there is something God is doing and is ahead of you. Preparing something in advance for you to do. How can I help you? He said, tell me. He asked one question, how can I help you? Now, without expecting an answer, he moves to the second question. What is that? What do you have in your house? What do you have in your house? He didn't say, what does your neighbor have? No, no. What is in your house? What do you have in your house? What do you have in your house? What do you have? Don't say I have nothing. This lady said, I have nothing except there's a little oil. But still it's oil. Say still it's oil. Whether it's a little or much, still it's an oil. Still you're something. Amen? I want to tell everybody here, never ever say that. There's nothing in my life. There is something in your life. Hallelujah. There is something in your life. So I told you in the beginning, the title of my message is going to be, The little you have is becoming much. I believe in my spirit prophetically. You know, whatever you have as a little in your life, this morning by the touch of heaven, I want to decree and declare over your life. It is about to multiply. It's about to increase. The little in your life, it's becoming much in Jesus' name. Sometime, now we live in a very competitive world, isn't it? We are in a kind of rat race. People want to live in the biggest houses, drive the biggest cars, hold the biggest job. Everything should be big. We don't want to identify ourselves with small things. Nor we are taught to value small things in our lives. But in the kingdom of God, you see the principle is the reverse. If you are faithful in little things, God says... Is going to bless you with many things in your life. Amen. It may be just five loaves and two fish. But God says that's going to be more than enough for me. To take the little, the five loaves and two fish. One touch is going to multiply. Supernaturally multiply what you have. And feed even the multitude. Not only that, much is going to be left behind as well. Our God is a God of little things. Say Amen. Amen. Don't look around. You know, a lot of times you know, we have a problem to keep on looking around. When people sit to eat together, start looking to their plate, they look at somebody's plate. The problem is, you know, he wants to know how much this guy eats. Hello. We even look at somebody else's sari. Because we are always concerned with what somebody else has. We find more value in what they have than what we have. I want to strongly tell somebody, don't look around. Maybe you'll be filled with jealousy. First look within. Amen. Be thankful. Be full of gratitude. Hallelujah. Look within. There's something that is within you. It may be little, it may not be much, but I want to tell you, God has decided to bless what you have. 
the little you have in your life when it's combined with the blessings of God that will multiply somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. praise the Lord amen she said accept a little oil Accept a little oil. She was trying to say, forget about it. This is not a much value. This is not going to pay my debt. He's as good as I don't have anything else. Maybe some of us, we say to ourselves, I pray that the Lord will open your eyes to see the treasures in your life. It may be little, but God says, Hold on to it, value it, recognize it, appreciate it, work on it, guard it, protect it. You follow what I'm saying? Because God is about to begin doing something with the little you have. The little is not going to be little for a long time. Hallelujah. The little in the hands of the Almighty God is about to multiply. It's about to increase in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. This woman came to a man of God, I believe. The man of God is a man of the word. I told you, we need to know what we should expect from a man of God. A lot of people don't understand. You want the pastor to be friendly, that's going to be fine. You want to socialize and have dinner together, that's going to be fine. The purpose here is, you must receive the word from the man of God. Say amen. Otherwise, no use. No use. You go to the doctor to be treated. You don't go to the hospital to just have a good time with the doctor. He'll be friendly to you. He can talk to you nicely. But at the end of the day, you must receive the treatment and eat the medication. Amen? When you go to college, you better learn what the professors they teach. So when it comes to the kingdom of God, you must know what I can expect for the man of God. Peter said, where shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Sometimes you can stick around with the man of God for a long time, even for many years, and be totally impoverished with the word of God. Because you do not know what to receive. Probably you don't want to receive. This lady knew. Elisha had the word. Amen. How many of you are excited about the word? Somebody shout the word. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. The Bible never says uh, the truth will set you free. No, no, no. That would be wrong. You shall know the truth. And the truth you have learned. And the knowledge of the truth will set you free. It is a process. Process. You reject the truth, you choose to live in ignorance. We are being foolish. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Man shall live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Lift your hands and say amen. amen. What you need is not a miracle. What you need is the word. What you need is not a healing. What you need is the word. What you need is not a financial blessing. What you need is the word. If you have the right kind of spiritual diagnosis concerning your life and situation, I would like to tell you the main thing you want in your life, the main problem you have in your life, you are deficient of God's word. There's no word of God in you. You don't focus on the word. You don't study the word. You are not teachable. And you're looking for every other blessing all around. You can look around at people. They have this. These people have this. Everybody's blessed. Plus, hey, your problem is you are rejecting the word. When you reject the word, you reject the counsel of God. Does that mean something to somebody else? When you say no to the word of God, you reject the counsel of God. Yes, she is in a situation where she needs a miracle. But over and above, she came to the man of God. If she wanted money, she could have gone to somebody, a businessman. Or to an uncle, or to an aunt, or to some friends. <laughs> Give me some money. But she came to a man of God knowing that the man of God has the word. Can I tell you this? Wherever, wherever you see a man of God with the word, there is a possibility for a supernatural solution to your problems. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Look at the entire world. The Bible says uh, God created the entire world just by speaking the word. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? In the beginning God and then the Bible says uh, in John it says in the beginning was the word. <laughs> and the word was with God and the word was God. <laughs> And everything has been created through him. Nothing has been created without him. That means the Bible says in the beginning was the word. Somebody shout the word. So what came first is the word. Hallelujah. The spirit of God reminding me about a particular verse. Yes. Glory to God. Second Peter chapter 3. Verses from 4 onwards. Maybe from three onwards we'll read so you understand the context. Okay? Read and confess. Verse three onwards. First of all, you must understand that in the last days scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, Where is this coming? He promised. Ever since our fathers died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens existed. And the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also the world of the time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and the earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. Thank you so much. Kindly be seated. Here the Bible talks about the second coming of Jesus Christ. My focus is on the word of God. Listen, my focus is on the word of God. A lot of people keep saying, you no, know, about the coming of Jesus. Everything has been going on just in the same way. Where is this coming? The Bible says, words why focus but they deliberately forget that long ago by God's word, the heavens existed and the earth was formed out of water and by water. So now listen. By God's word, heaven existed. So which came first? The word of God. Say the word of God. So the word of God created the heavens. Am I right? And then the Bible says here, and the earth was formed out of water and by water. So the word created the water and then out of the water God formed the earth. So the earth is an outcome of the water. Am I right? So now you need to understand the powerful work of the Holy Spirit. The first introduction, uh, introduction for the Holy Spirit in the Bible you read in Genesis 1 it talks about uh, in the beginning God and then the Bible says and the Spirit of God was hovering upon the waters. It simply says the Spirit of God was moving upon the waters. Some translations say that means he was an active force. It's not that he was sitting upon the waters. He was moving upon the waters. Somebody shout moving. moving. Say moving. moving. Oh my goodness. And I see the Spirit of God as a powerful supernatural being moving upon the waters and there he spoke the word let there be light the bible say everything you see in heaven above and on earth is created by the word of god and not only that what is even more shocking verse number seven it says by the same word somebody shout by the same word wow the word of god it's the solid force determining factor as far as the outcome of anything in heaven and above. It says here, by the same word, the present heavens and the earth are reserved for fire. Same word. It's talking about the end of the world. Why I'm saying what I'm saying? This only to tell you and me that we need the word of God. 
The word of God is the beginning and the end. The word of God is everything. The Bible says in in Hebrew chapter 1 verse 3, if I'm right, it says, uh, No, he is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. Somebody say amen. Amen. Sustaining all things by his powerful word. If you're excited, shout with me and say, Sustaining Sustaining all things things by by his powerful word. Even the stars and the moon and the millions of stars in the galaxy and everything is being sustained by his powerful word. I want to highlight here the sustaining power of the word of God. How much more your life could be sustained by the power of God. How much more your health could be sustained by the power of God. How much more your marriage, your children, your family could be sustained by the power of God. How much more your finance could be sustained by the power of God. You shout and say out of your spirit of faith that I'm being sustained by the word of God. Sustained. Are you excited? It looks only I am excited. His word brings joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Something is being added to your life for all eternity. Once you receive that word of revelation. Your money will go away. Your wealth will go away. But the word that has come into your spirit. It's locked up in the inner man. It will not leave for all eternity. I am sowing something this morning. Which is for all eternity. Make sure you don't miss it, but collect it, retain it with your, in your spirit. Amen. So he said, how can I help you? So she came to the man of God looking for the word. So I want to tell everybody, the first lesson you learn in your life this morning is how to deal with crisis in your life is to look for God's word. Amen. Look for the word of God. Your blessing is connected to the word of God, to the promise of God. You have the word, you have your blessing. You have the word, then you can have your healing. You have the word, then you can have your finance. You have the word, then you can have your health. You have the word, you have it all. If you don't have the word, you lose everything. Everything you have minus the word means nothing to you. But if there is a blessing in your life which is connected to the promise of God, you know you receive this blessing out of a promise. That's the reason Isaac was so precious and powerful. Amen. Because he's not the child of the natural way. But he's given. He's an outcome of the promise of God. No demon from the pits of hell. Nothing can ever destroy Isaac. Say amen. But he's not like Ishmael. Isaac was born out of promise. Your child, your blessing, your your sons, your daughters, your word, your business, your finance, uh, all those things are an outcome of the promise. When the devil comes to touch all of that, tell him, speak the promise and chase him away. That's how you secure every blessing in your life, connected to the promise of God. Hallelujah. So she came to the man of God. How can I help you? Find out what's in your house. What do you have? It's okay to speak the truth. Some people will not have anything, but they will talk as though everything is fine. How are you? I'm fine. Oh, good, 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 good. Everything is good. Oh, fantastic. They go back, they cry. Tired of acting out, right? Pretending to be somebody you are not. Be open. Be transparent. When God asks you a question, does not mean that he doesn't know the answer? He knew the answer. But he's testing you. When you give the right answer, I want to tell you, you will receive the right solution. When you have a problem, open your mouth and say, yes, I do have a problem. I'm not doing well. I'm not happy. I'm frustrated. I'm going through a depression. I'm battling with sin. Don't try to cover it up. God knows the best about you, worst about you. He's not there to condemn you, but to lift you up. Amen. 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 If you speak lies to the doctor, 
he'll give wrong medicine he will kill you right so when you come to god open your heart open up your heart and say everything as it is she said yes there is a little oil i want to release this prophetic word over somebody this morning you may feel everything is gone but there is something heaven has spotted in your life located in your life the gps of heaven has located a treasure in your heart in your spirit in your life it is not much it is little but still it's more than enough for god to do a miracle in your life amen the prophet knew exactly what she was saying when she said a little oil come on that's it that's where i'm about to begin my miracle always remember your miracle is in your mouth if she had said nothing it would have become nothing but she said there is a little oil the prophet said yes that's it that's the beginning point that's the contact point that's the point of agreement between you and me and god to begin your miracle come let's participate in the miracle i want to tell everybody here heaven is spotted located something in your life it may be very little not much but i would like to prophesy over you even those who watch us through the television or even through the internet the little you have in your life it's about to become much the same oil same oil somebody you wonder you know what i'm going to have it's going to come from somewhere no sort from somewhere your miracle is with you now the seed of your miracle is with you now somebody shout hallelujah amen you don't have to look around crossing all the seas mountains and valleys it is right there in you in you but the only problem is we don't see in the way god sees that is our problem see step by step the procedure for a miracle you see go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars don't ask for just a few don't ask for just a few say don't ask for just a few i believe not a lot of people they god has a miracle for them but they don't participate in the miracle spectators will not receive anything in order to receive the miracle that god has predestinated for your life you need to prepare yourself for the miracle say prepare. prepare amen god's blessing is not released into the life of somebody who is not prepared you should be prepared you must have the faith in your spirit you must listen to the word of god you must follow the instruction when the faith is rising upon the inside you anticipate you expect you get excited and you begin to cooperate with god to receive a miracle Amen. Even while I'm preaching the word, I want to tell you that is a miracle reserved for each and every one of you. But the point is here: Are you willing to cooperate with God? Are you willing to participate and prepare yourself for that miracle? I want to tell somebody: Whether people help you or not, go inside your prayer room, lock the door behind you, shut the door behind you, begin to intercede, wrestle with your Father in heaven. Oh Father, give me the word. Without your word, I will die. I need your word. It's not an option. It's my survival. Amen. Hallelujah. sometime i feel we need a miracle but we are not desperate that's the issue we are not desperate we are casual crying baby drink sir desperate people are restless they cannot take no for an answer they will not stop at one time prayer they will not stop with one time fasting because they are in the mode of wrestling with 
God unless until you bless me I will not let you go let it takes weeks or months but I'm not going to give up I know it's a battle I'm focused I'm determined I'm willing to face the enemy head on no turning back I'm not going to quit until the Lord will answer my prayer you have set your face like a flint you have refused to bow down to the weight of your situation you are like a spiritual spiritual militant facing your situation God is with you faith can face anything head on eyeball to eyeball amen I want to tell somebody and listen carefully if you start running away you'll keep on running away how far you'll run how long you'll run run away from what where you will run to stop running stop somebody shout stop, stop. that is not the solution stay put look up look up and tell the Lord I need a miracle I need a miracle I want you to intercept with the plans of the devil against my life. I'm not going to take a no for an answer. I'm duped for my miracle of God. I've been praying for a long time. I need your miracle in my life. I pray this morning while I preach the word of God. You know, I would like to stir up somebody's faith. And stimulate your faith. That you may stretch out your hands towards God. And believe, trust God for your miracle in your life. Move on to next level. Move on to next level of anointing. Next level of power. Next level of blessing. Come on, put your hands together. Give glory to God. Praise the Lord. Don't ask for just a few. Remember a few. Somehow I feel in my spirit believe. Some of you are limited your blessings. You're limited your blessings. Because you're asking for few things. You're asking for little things. You do not know the word of God. The Bible says the deal between you and God. God says I'm going to bless you more than what you ask or imagine according to his power which is at work within you. That means the deal is exceedingly and abundantly more than all that you ask or imagine according to his power. Somebody shout his power. Hallelujah. It's not just about you. It is about the God in whom you believe. Your faith connects you with the supernatural God. Your faith connects you with a supernatural blessing. Heaven dictates terms and conditions for your life here on earth. Amen. The angels are behind you. The Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. They get into a council and decide about your destiny. You are mocked by heaven. You are in the kingdom of God. You are born of God. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You have the mind of Christ. You are walking God in the light, not in the darkness. What do you think about yourself? That is the issue. You know something? It's very difficult for God to bless somebody when you don't cooperate with God in faith. That's why many times he said, let it be according to your faith. Woman, your faith has healed you. I told you, my dear friend, you works in ways that you cannot see. You believe that? When you cannot have any natural solution for your problem, it's time for you to receive a supernatural solution. Say amen. Lift your hands and say, I'm going to receive my supernatural solution. Don't look around here and there. Don't look at people. Be on your knees. Wrestling with God. Move in the spirit realm. Saying, I'm going to see my supernatural solution. I was in the Northeast. And on the third day meeting, on old parents, you know, quite old, they came. After the meeting was over, a lot of miracles took place. People healed, delivered. They cried. They said one thing. My daughter is bleeding for the last six months. 
continuous bleeding we are taken to doctors we had tried one doctor after the other tried every kind of medicine we have spent money still we have money to spend doctors say it's a wonder for us we do not know what to do what the best we could do we have done it the best medicine we could give we have given it already wait until the medicine works it doesn't work for the last 6 months they are crying the lady could not travel anywhere she was at home they traveled about you know 3 hours and came for the meeting my heart was broken they have been going from one place to another place while she is dying slowly with bleeding in a house i cried held the hands of both the parents i told god give them a supernatural solution i'm not going to pray for the medicine to work out send them to the right doctor give them a supernatural solution i gave a command to the pastor held everything which is a causality force working behind the sickness i command the demon to leave in jesus name Amen. while i was praying with them both the parents they went under the anointing similarly god told me he told me the demon that was tormenting the woman left I told the pastor I want to know let them go back home please give me a call because God has given a supernatural solution before I could board the flight they told me that lady that same moment the bleeding stopped come on put your hands together same moment God gives you supernatural solution God has a supernatural solution for you. Amen. Amen. Knock on the doors of heaven. I pray that your faith will rise up. Nothing will put your faith down. Everything will be shaking all around you. But I want to decree, declare in the name of Jesus. The faith on the inside of you. It's like a powerful force. Working rigorously on the inside. That you refuse to bow down. Before the weight of your situation. Amen. somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah hallelujah don't limit god amen don't ask for just a few do not limit god i'm speaking to somebody eyeball to eyeball do not limit god there is more to anything you ever seen amen the little you have when it's combined with a faith in your heart it becomes explosive say amen it's not a question of whether you have much or whether you have little a lot of times we say you know i don't have much if only i have much it's not about the quantity it's about the quality of your faith some people talk about money some people talk about wealth talking about what they have much but i want to tell you some people speak about their faith in god paul said i know in whom i believe job said i know my redeemer lives somebody say amen, amen. hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. say hallelujah. hallelujah paul says the life that i live in the body i live by faith in the son of god who loved and gave himself for me amen you and god together you make the majority you are already on the winning side you are moving forward you are progressing what god wants to do in your life can never be reversed don't ask for just a few i want to finish here because i want to only speak about the prophetic word for now Amen. Go and ask for jars, empty vessels, and then start pouring the little oil you have into those empty vessels. Amen. The miracle is not done by the man of God. Listen, the miracle is happening in the hands of a widow. In the hands of a widow, where? Not outside. Hello. 
it's true she went to see a man of god all those things the prophet said hey hold on the miracle is in your house the little you have that's enough for god take your faith have faith in god come by combine your faith with the little thing you have you know what's happening today people without faith they go around looking for a solution from somebody from some relative from some uncle and aunt from some friends but i want to tell you when you have faith in god when you go after god god will send the miracle into your house come on you're not excited put your hands together give glory to god send the miracle into her house hallelujah what a powerful thing miracle in the house and i pray this morning god is sending some miracle into your house into your family into your business into your marriage into your circumstances in your finances in your career in your job i want to tell you god is sending a miracle right where you are right now oh lift your hand and say receive it in jesus mighty name the miracle is an outcome of the word of god how do you know it everybody read that verse 5 enough say it again say it again say it a little louder stop look at me she left him she never said oh oh man of god come to my house oh prophet come to my house oh prophet no don't leave me no 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 listen i told you what you need is the word she left him but not without the word not without the instruction she left him but she carried the instruction of the word of god she received faith sometimes that's what men of god we do when you come humble yourself ask for a supernatural solution we join hands with you pray with you in agreement i want to tell you and god is a faithful god when two of you agree about anything here on earth it shall be given by my father in heaven when you and i we agree by faith based on the word of promise that is agreement that is power in that agreement that is a force in that agreement that is a supernatural power in that agreement god says if two of you can agree then god says i'm also going to agree amen i need just just need two we are ready father son of the holy spirit in heaven we are ready find somebody who can agree with you for your miracle then god says i'm going to be there i wonder sometime in the families marriages business just because you don't have an agreement in the word of god you're missing your miracle all the neighbors gave jars amen that means god was giving favor in the eyes of all neighbors lift your hand lift your hand everybody i want to tell you god is sending favor on your way from all those who are around you god is sending favor on your way in your job god is sending favor from your clients god is sending favor among your neighbors friends and relatives say i receive it in jesus name bring all the empty jars pour the oil the miracle is happening right in her hand she is filling one by one one by one one by one told the sons bring me another jar son said no more then the oil stopped i want to tell somebody bring that empty vessel You've been keeping too long in your life. Bring that empty vessel. God says, no matter how many empty vessels you have, I'm going to fill it all. Name them. Name them. What is, what is the empty vessel in your life? Maybe it's your spiritual life. Maybe it's your prayer life. Maybe it's about your marriage. Maybe it's about your kids. Maybe it's about your business. Maybe it's about your finance. Maybe it's about something. It's about your health. But God says, name it, bring it empty. I will do the filling, but you bring it. 
Bring it over to me. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Get ready for your miracle. I want to prophesy. I told you thy message right in the beginning. The message the one God, God wants to give you this morning is uh, the little you have is becoming much. Lift your hands. I want to prophesy. Oh, every, everybody lift your hands. If you are in the church, lift your hands. Don't feel shy. I want to tell you, the little you have in your life, be it about your money, be it about anything, you may say it's little, but God says, I'm touching that little. The little thing in your life, today, it's becoming much. My son, my daughter, don't worry. I'm going to touch it. I'm going to release my blessing upon that. The little you have, I bless you. It is becoming much. Come on, put your hands together. Give glory to God. Hallelujah. Stand with me to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you believe? God is going to send a miracle right into my house. Hallelujah. People would have asked, hey, we do <laughs> Who gave you this? Hey, we do <laughs> Where did he get? <laughs> Hey, we know, where did you go? Hardly anyone did understand the miracle was sent to a doorstep. Within the close walls, why she could have cried before, why she spent sleepless nights, were holding on to two sons. Out of fear, she would have cried, I'm going to lose you. I lost your dad, but I'm going to lose you in that same place. Place, I want to tell you, God had sent a miracle. Amen. Lift your hand. I want. I'm prophesying over you. I'm prophesying over you. Hurra masate rakoli andarashe ibrona kona si analamu ibamano sante. Oh, hallelujah! One of these days, behind the closed doors. You and your family, you are about to witness a miracle with your own eyes. People will not know about it. Nobody will know about it. But inside your home, you and your family, while you kneel down, looking up to God, you're going to witness the miracle. You're going to find the oil flowing into every empty vessel, one after the other, 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 until you have no more vessel to collect the oil. Satanamona Sate. Open your mouth and say, I receive it, Lord. I receive it. I believe it. Oh, hey. Open up your heart. Open up your life. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Pray, pray. Even those who watch us through the television, open your mouth, put your hands and touch the television and begin to pray. Shantanamo, Ikanamo, Shate. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and say, I believe. I believe. Oh, I believe for my miracle. Oh, la mama mama Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let me pray. Let me pray right now. Lift your hands and join with me in agreement. The little you have is about to become much. Hallelujah. The same little thing. It's going to be the seed of miracle in your life. The same thing. The little thing that you have. The little money you have. The little anointing you have. The little power you have. The little business you have. Oh, it's going to become much. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree and declare a powerful supernatural solution to your pre people of God. This morning they receive the word of faith and I believe you're going to send the miracle right into your bosom. The miracle one of these days is going to knock on the door right behind their closed doors. Husband, wife and children, husband and wife together, you're about to witness a supernatural miracle in your life in the most powerful name of Jesus Christ. Clap your hands and receive that. Say I receive. is power in the name of 
Jesus. Come on, lift your hands and say, There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is, there is power in the name of Jesus. To break, to break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain. Every chain, break every chain. I believe, I believe, I believe for my miracles. Say, I believe, I believe, I believe for my miracle. I believe, say, I believe, I believe. How many of you say, I believe? See, that which stands between you and your miracle is your lack of faith. Your faith is the key to unlock your miracle. When God wants to give a miracle to you, He gives the treasure box. But He gives the key in the form of faith. The key of faith works to open up your treasure box. Amen? I believe. See? I believe, I believe for my miracles. I believe, I believe, I believe for my miracle. I believe, I believe, I believe for my miracle. I believe, I believe, oh, I believe for my miracle. I believe, I believe. Remember this thing and say, I believe, I believe, I believe this week is going to be special. I believe, yes. Think about the miracle in your life and say, I believe, miracle. I believe, I believe, I believe for a miracle. I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe for my miracle. I believe, I believe, I believe for my miracle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh,
I want to tell everybody you have a chance you want to be a spectator or you want to be a participant in your miracle while well, some being a spectator some people come they cry they hold on to God they do what they can to tell God I'm ready I'm prepared for my miracle never give up amen your situation is not too late for God to deal with lift your hands I want to bless you father I want to send your children in the name of Jesus Christ oh father God I pray one of these days when they go back right into their home in their house you're gonna send the miracle in Jesus name they're gonna come back with a testimony where they were talking about their pain their loss uh, and so many other things so God now they're gonna come back uh, and testify about the miracle of God I want to thank you I want to praise you God bless everybody Lord this week I cancel every work of the devil in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth hallelujah surprise them Lord this week Surprise them. Surprise them, I pray, oh God. Give me glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.